Hello students, welcome back. In this video, we will look at how to rewrite the exec.v shell code using the stack method. So let's jump into our setup and actually let me copy out execv.nasm uh, into execv stack.nasm. Let's open it up. Oops. And let me rename the file. And let me remove all of this from here entirely first, right? We really don't need any of this. All I really want is the skeleton so that, you know, uh, we always have the same common starting point. Okay. Now remind yourself of the stack method, uh, which I demoed to you for Hello World right the hello world shell code now there are a bunch of things which you'd probably remember from the previous video let me kind of take you back probably this screen would be the one which is most important okay if you remember the ebx register would need to point to bin bash uh, the ecx register would need to point to argv and the EDX register would need to point to ENVP, right? And this were really the values which you wanted to uh, put in all of those locations. Now, I'm trying to create this exact same setup using the stack. The key difference here will be rather than pushing them in this specific order, as you currently see, I'm going to push them in a different order and then point the appropriate registers in such a way so that this condition which we had taken in the previous video about EBX pointing to bin bash, ECX pointing to argv and EDX pointing to ENVP is valid. So now let me come back in here. Okay. So stack as we know grows from high memory to low memory. The first thing we are going to push on the stack is a D word which is just nulls. Now let me go ahead and write the code uh, as we go ahead and do this, right? So in order to do that multiple ways, I could just zor eax eax and push eax onto the stack. Fantastic. Let's go back. Now the next thing I want to push is basically the string bin bash on the stack. So let's go back in here. Let me open up a new terminal because I want to show you something else before we go there. Okay. Now, if you look at slash bin slash bash, this is basically nine characters, right? And if you execute it, of course, you're going to get a new bash prompt. Now, if you remember, we typically want the pushes to be kind of aligned with four or multiples of four, right? Which is we would actually want to go ahead and put in 12 instead of nine characters. It makes it easy to just use a couple of pushes. Now, there are multiple ways, of course, in which you could just put in nine and then you could figure out other instructions with which you could ensure that everything works. But that would increase the number of op codes in the final shell code. This is where a common trick uh, is used by shell coders, which is whenever you run a program by giving its path, the number of slashes in there does not really matter. What do I mean by that? Well, you could invoke bin bash like this or even or let me actually invoke bin sh so that we clearly see a difference. So this is bin sh, but you could also add an extra slash and invoke it like this, frankly you could add as many as you like, right? It has the exact same effect uh, as far as execution, uh, interpretation and execution of this string is concerned. So this is what we are going to use rather than using just simply bin bash. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add three more of them, 10, 11 and 12. And this is exactly the string which we now want to push exactly in reverse direction like we had seen in previous videos. 
Now you could use Python and all of that stuff uh, as I'd shown you previously, but me being really lazy, I've written a very simple program to do all of that in just a Jiffy. So you have reverse and after that feed it the string. So we had four bin slash bash. And if it says string length is 12, you're good. It's a multiple of four. And if you notice, it already tells you what you need to push in reverse order, right? Simple little script, but comes in really handy uh, when you want to play along with the stack method for writing shell code. So I'm going to push these three onto the stack first. Let me go back in here, copy this out. And of course, you could have redistributed the slashes between uh, the two original ones which were there. Here comes the final one. There we go. Let me go back to the slides. Now, if you notice, this is nothing but bin bash null terminated. And bin bash null terminated needs to be there where? Inside the EBX register, the address to this location. Now, what is the register which currently points to the beginning of the bin bash string? ESP, right? Because we are pushing all of this on stack. So to get that inside EBX, we use the simple move instruction, EBX ESP. Fantastic. Now let me go back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push another null in. And if you remember, ENVP actually needs to point to a null in memory and ENVP needs to be there in the EDX register. So we will push a null and then save ESI into EDX. So here goes, we again push EAX and then I'm just going to move EDX ESP. Right, fantastic. And guys, it's probably a good idea also to kind of comment everything in, you know, I'm leaving the comments to you. So it's like, you know, push the first null D word, you know, whatever you'd like to write here. Push bin bash 12. So you remember why you did that, you know? and so on and so forth. I kind of leave it to you. When you practice the code, uh, it's probably a good idea that you should write the comments, at least in the beginning. Now, what remains is basically arg v, which is supposed to point to the location where we have the address in the first D word and the null in the second D word, right? So I'm going to push the address of this location stored on EBX on the stack, which is very simple because it's already in EBX. So all I do is a push EBX. And then once that is done, I just move the top of the stack onto the ECX register. So here goes move ECX ESP. There you go. Right. Now, all I need to do after this is call the syscall. So you have move AL uh, either 0b or 11, whatever you like, int 0x80, which is basically cd80 in opcode, to call the syscall exec ve, which should do rest of the stuff, right? Fantastic. Uh, now let's go ahead and assemble and link this. Awesome. Here we go. And if you notice, execution happened, right? Which means everything is absolutely fine.
quick look with object dump so that we are sure there are no nulls which have kind of crept in anywhere and of course when you do exploit research probably any of the other disallowed bad characters as well fantastic this calls for a cut exactly stack we have our beautiful little shell code in here copy it out open up shell code dot C paste it in compile oops run the shell code and there we go right awesome and to be honest you could just play around with this uh, right now so instead if you wanted bin sh all you would basically have to do is replace the little pushes in here with bin sh which would mean you could just go in here and do first check how much characters bin sh occupies by itself it's already seven you could add one here as well this makes it eight and here you go you just need to copy this out right go in here let me just uncomment this out rather than like changing it or deleting it entirely so that you guys can use it for a reference later on uh, when you want to have a look at my code right we copy this out paste it in here the best part if you notice everything else is like just taken care by itself in the sense there is no dependence uh, you know really on the size of what we are pushing right which is the string here which you're pushing in can actually be arbitrary long okay you can just go back in here run all the commands once again verify that this works does work cut get the shell code and to be honest even this whole process can be automated which is uh, you know you're going ahead and writing a script which first of all links assembles calls object dumb so that you can quickly grep and check if there are any nulls or not if no nulls then go ahead use the whole long expression to cut generate the shell code and then paste it automatically inside shell code.c compile it and then run it right that will save you a lot of time uh, the reason I personally like to go through this because while teaching I want you to be aware of all of these steps because frankly it's the exact same steps each and every time you want to play with shell code right these steps should be in your mind you should never ever forget any of them there you go run this and here we are now even though people show bin sh and bin uh, bash with shell code most of the time well exec v pretty much allows you to run anything right uh, the case which we are working with right now is exec v which is calling any other program but not passing any other arguments because if you remember if you want to pass other arguments you need to extend argv then argv would first contain the address of the program's uh, name which you want to execute then all the argument addresses and then finally the null right so i leave it to you as an exercise to give arguments and things like that it's pretty straightforward it's, it's just on the same line uh, the only thing i want to kind of put it in your mind is pretty much you can execute any program you like so let's say you wanted to just you know do an ls uh, in the current directory you could pretty much do that as well so from what I remember it is in bin ls yep so I could just call my little program here again and say bin ls 7 so I could just say hey here's my next slash 8 
and you could pretty much copy this right let me uncomment sorry let me comment out these lines as well so you can try out all of these later on on your own Now interesting things could be done here for example if you look at shell storm you will see a lot of code which says IP tables flush you know which is like clearing IP tables and stuff like that uh, which you could use basically what the shell code is really helping you do is pretty much run any command you want on the remote system which is available right so let's try if I execute this actually see I just did an ls on the same directory and you could pretty much uh, you know do an object dump cut and then paste it inside shellcode.c and it will run as well hopefully you figured out why I was able to run exec v dash stack without any worries while the plain exec v is used jump call pop had a segmentation fault right it's important you understand that on your own because you know there has to be some self-exploration as well okay guys so I think we've had a lot of fun in this video I'll see you in the next one take care bye bye